Imagine yourself a fisherman, casting your nets into the shimmering sea. Suddenly, you feel an unusual weight, a desperate struggle. Could it be just a big fish or something far more extraordinary? What would you do if you found a beautiful mermaid, her shimmering scales caught in your net? Welcome to Mystic Moon Tales, where we dive into the rich folklore of Africa. These stories offer more than just entertainment. They hold ancient wisdom and hidden truths about the human heart. Today, we unravel a tale of love, temptation, and the unforeseen consequences of our choices. This is the story of Ola, a humble fisherman. His life was simple, his marriage content, until fate brought a magical twist. By the end of this tale, you'll understand the dangers of unchecked desire and why sometimes the greatest treasures are those we already possess. So stay with us and prepare to discover the hidden depths of this captivating folk tale. Ola was a man of the sea. His weathered hands knew the rhythms of the teeds, and his nets were his lifeline. He provided for his wife, Yemi, and their small home nest led by the shore. Their life wasn't extravagant, but it was filled with the simple joys of shared meals and quiet companionship. One day, like so many days before, Ola set out in his wooden boat. The net splashed into the water, a familiar ritual. Yet this time, the net grew unusually heavy, straining against his muscles. With a mighty heave, he pulled his catch onto the boat and found himself staring not at a bounty of fish, but at the wide, frightened eyes of a mermaid. Her tail shimmered like scattered jewels, her voice a haunting melody as she pleaded for freedom. Ola's heart pounded. Here was a creature of legend, a being that could grant untold riches or a terrible curse. He found himself staring not at a bounty of fish, but at the wide, frightened eyes of a mermaid. Her tail shimmered with an otherworldly luminescence, scales iridescent like the deepest ocean depths. Her hair flowed like strands of living seaweed, framing a face of heartbreaking beauty. Her voice, a haunting melody tinged with desperation, pleaded for freedom. Ola's heart pounded against his ribs like a trapped bird. Here was a creature of legend, a being straight out of the tales his grandmother used to whisper over a flickering fire. A fisherman's life is hard, filled with uncertainty and the constant battle against the relentless sea. Fear prickled at his skin, the old stories echoing in his ears, vengeful mermaids, curses flung from the waves. Yet, as he gazed into her pleading eyes, he saw something else a desperation mirroring the struggles of his own people against the whims of nature. Compassion stirred within him, a flicker of warmth against the cool calculation of survival. Could he turn his back on this extraordinary creature, a being so far beyond his everyday existence? The mermaid's voice trembled, no longer a song but choked with fear. Please, fisherman, she whispered, cut me free. The sea is my home. I cannot survive upon your world. A tear rolled down her cheek, glinting like a pearl in the sunlight. Sensing his hesitation, she pressed on, a desperate edge in her voice. If you show me mercy, she said, I will not leave you empty-handed. Take this. With surprising strength, she lifted a conch shell. Its surface seemed to ripple with an inner light, etched with swirling patterns that throbbed like a distant heartbeat. This shell holds magic, the mermaid explained, her voice gaining a hint of its former ethereal quality. Speak your wish aloud, and it shall be granted. Wealth beyond measure, power to command the very tides, anything your heart desires, it can be yours in exchange for my freedom. Ola stared at the shell, his mind a whirlwind. Here was a chance to change everything, to rewrite his destiny. With just a few wishes, he could escape his life of toil and hardship. He could drape Yemi in silks and jewels, fill their home with laughter instead of the gnawing worry of an uncertain catch. A lifetime of wishes. 
It was an offer too tempting to ignore. Yet a sliver of doubt lingered. Wasn't contentment the true treasure he sought? The conflict raged within Ola. Greed painted visions of unimaginable riches across his mind, yet a quieter voice, Yemi's voice, whispered of the simple contentment they once knew. Finally, he took a deep breath, the salty sea air filling his lungs and clearing his thoughts. With a gentle hand, he began to cut the ropes binding the mermaid. Her eyes widened in relief, a flicker of warmth replacing the terror. You have a kind heart, fisherman, she murmured, a touch of awe in her voice. May your compassion be rewarded. As she slipped back into the waves, she pressed the conch shell into his rough palm. Its pulse seemed to beat in time with his own heart. Use it wisely, she cautioned, for wishes twist like the tide, and with power always comes a price. And with that, she was gone, leaving only a swirl of foam and the whisper of the sea breeze. Ola returned home, the magic conch hidden in his pocket like a burning secret. He told Yemi of the mermaid, omitting the most fantastical element. She laughed, her eyes crinkling. Ah, Ola, the sea does strange things to a man's mind. But that night, as Ola held the shell, the whispers of possibility were impossible to ignore. At first, Ola's wishes were small, practical. Bountiful catches appeared in his nets, enough to sell in the market and leave their table overflowing. He mended the leaking roof of their cottage, replacing it with sturdy tiles that kept out the relentless sea storms. Yemi rejoiced, seeing an ease in his movements, a lightness in his eyes that had long been absent. Yet, the shell beckoned, a siren call whispering in the quiet hours of the night. With each wish granted, another bloomed in its place. A field appeared, bursting with crops far more abundant than the sandy soil usually provided. A small shop sprang up in the village square overflowing with Ola's goods, his name spoken with a mixture of respect and envy. Ola's heart swelled with a sense of power he'd never known. But the shell was a demanding mistress. Each wish seemed to echo, begging for another, more extravagant, more daring. His nights were restless, plagued by dreams, not of mermaids, but of gold coins overflowing his hands, of a house grander than any along the shore. The changes in Ola were subtle at first. Where once he found joy in watching the sunset with Yemi, now he begrudged the lost time, time that could be spent summoning greater riches. Her gentle inquiries about his late-night wanderings to the shore were met with irritation, a defensiveness he hardly recognized in himself. Yemi's worry bloomed like a dark flower in her eyes. She still smiled, but the brightness had dimmed. The sea, once a source of shared livelihood, now felt like a rival for her husband's attention. Even the conch shell seemed to take on a sinister gleam, its promise tinged with a sense of unease she couldn't quite name. The once modest home that held laughter and the scent of Yemi's cooking transformed. It expanded into a multi-room dwelling, filled with ornate furniture and tapestries Ola barely noticed. Yemi's touch was lost beneath the hired help bustling about her voice drowned out by the constant chatter of merchants and envious villagers. Arguments started small, like grains of sand caught in a net, but grew in intensity. Ola, drunk on his newfound power, scoffed at her anxieties. Don't you see, woman? He'd roar. This is for us, for our future. Yemi would retreat, tears welling in her eyes. She'd seek solace by the shore, the same shore where Ola once found his extraordinary fortune. Yet, even the sound of the waves couldn't drown out the echo of the mermaid's warning. With power always comes a price. One evening, driven by a relentless desire for respect that no amount of wealth could buy, Ola wished to become the village elder. The shell pulsed, and change swept through the village. The rightful elder, a wise old man with gnarled hands and eyes that had seen decades of storms, faded from memory. In his place, 
The villagers looked to Ola for guidance. But with this new position came a crushing weight of responsibility. Disputes, pleas for aid, problems Ola had never faced before assaulted him day and night. He sought answers in the shell, wishing for solutions. Yet, for the first time, the magic seemed tainted, the solutions harsh and hasty. He slept little, ate less, his hands forever clutching the shell like a lifeline. One night Yemi, a frail silhouette in their oversized house, approached him. Husband, she pleaded, voice barely above a whisper, this must end. You are fading before my eyes. Ola's response was a bitter laugh. Fading? I am stronger than ever. This, he gestured at the luxury around them. This is our destiny. With those words, a chasm opened between them wider than any ocean. Yemi left that night, her quiet footsteps disappearing down the path toward her childhood home. Without Yemi's steadying presence, Ola spiraled deeper into obsession. The villagers, once eager for his wealth, now whispered behind cupped hands. The harvests, once defying nature's limits, began to wither. The magic wasn't creating abundance, merely shifting it, leaving an imbalance in its wake. He found himself wishing for the crops to flourish once more, for the skeptical villagers to sing his praises. Yet each wish twisted in his hands. The fields overflowed with grotesque, misshapen vegetables inedible to man or beast. Storms ravaged the village, lashing out with a fury unheard of in years. The sea, once Ola's provider, seemed to recede, the boats returning with empty nets night after night. Desperation clawed at him. He wished to undo the misfortune, to rewind time. The shell throbbed in his hand, granting his desire in the cruelest form imaginable. Day turned to night, and night into day in a dizzying blur. With each reversal, Ola aged unnaturally. His once strong body withered, his skin turning the color of old parchment. He found himself back at the moment by the shore, the mermaid's desperate eyes staring up at him. But it was no longer his young, vigorous self reflected in the water. Instead, a wizened husk of a man stared back, haunted eyes filled with a lifetime of regret. The mermaid spoke, the melody gone from her voice. You were warned, fisherman. Greed does not fill a man. It consumes him. With each spoken word, the magical conch shell began to crack, its glow fading. It crumbled to dust in Ola's hand, leaving him alone on the shore, a broken man with nothing but the echoes of what he had lost. The villagers, once drawn to his false promises, now shunned him as a cursed man. His once bustling house fell into silent disrepair, filled only with ghosts of the past. No longer desiring wealth, his wishes became pleased to rewind the damage, to see Yemi's smile just once more. But the shell remained silent, its magic as dead as the hope in his heart. Driven half mad by loss and guilt, Ola wandered the shoreline, his ragged clothes mirroring the wreckage of his soul. He'd call out Yemi's name, only to have it snatched away by the uncaring wind. Former friends crossed the street to avoid his haunted gaze, leaving him a pariah in his own village. Nights were filled with fitful dreams of hands slipping from his grasp, of a mermaid's mournful song mocking his despair. Each sunrise was not a new beginning, but a countdown to another lonely sunset. The fisherman, once known for his bounty, now begged for scraps from tables where he had once feasted. Some say that Ola still roams the beach, a skeletal figure hunched beneath the indifferent sky. Children are warned away from the water's edge with tales of the man who sold his soul to the sea, his mournful cries a reminder that some treasures, once lost, can never be reclaimed. And so the tale of Ola the fisherman becomes a cautionary legend whispered amongst the coastal villages of Nigeria. It is a tale of the sea's bounty and the dangers of unchecked desire. The conch shell, with its promise of limitless wishes, mirrors the temptations we all face. 
It reminds us that true wealth lies not in material possessions, but in the love and shared contentment of a simple life. As the waves crash and the tide rolls in, remember Ola's story. May it guide us towards gratitude for what we have and a wary heart against chasing fleeting illusions of grandeur. For sometimes the greatest treasures are the ones that cannot be bought, wished for, or lost. The tale of Ola the Fisherman leaves us with many questions. Did he make the right decision by releasing the mermaid? Could he have controlled his greed? Or was his downfall sealed the moment he touched the magic conch? Share your thoughts in the comments below. What lessons about desire and contentment does this story hold for you? If you enjoyed this journey into African folklore, please like and subscribe to Mystic Moon Tales for more captivating stories steeped in wisdom. Until next time, may your choices lead you toward true treasures, and may the whispers of greed never steer you astray.